Hi and welcome to the second of our videos on uh, feature extraction in Enforce. Today I'm going to extend or basically just carry on from the previous example which was uh, essentially extracting the road markings which are there if I make them always visible and today instead of doing the road markings I'm going to look at this crash barrier or edges or walls however you want to kind of uh, describe them. So if I go to feature extraction and instead of road markings I'm going to go to wall curb. Um, essentially what we really mean here is an edge of some sort. That's that's really what we're talking about. There needs to be a height change. So the metric when we pulled out the white lines was the intensity. Now the metric is uh, a height change of some sort along the line of travel that we're trying to try and trying to move if in, a, in essence. So I'm going to give myself a new preset name. So I'm going to call this one crash barrier and go through the settings again. So uh, I'm not going to go through in as much detail as I went before because I've done that in the previous video. So let's change the point space into five and now I'm just going to disable the clustering. So I need to worry about that for this. So five redirects. I'll redirect that to is fine. Okay so the horizontal uh, so the, yeah, the the vertical and the horizontal tolerances I'm going to have to change. So now we're actually trying to pass in data uh, into the algorithm that represents the crash barrier. So what we're doing is we're trying to get we're trying to quantify this height change here in this data. So for us to be able to do that, we need to actually put a rough height in there of our crash barrier. If I just go to tools, measure vertical. So let's go from there to so down to here. It's about 270 mil. So that gives me a ballpark figure to work in. So the DZ toll, um, I'm going to have to put in there, say, 0.25. So I make sure I get data above and below, um, even though there is nothing above. Uh, but it'll basically, the data I do need will fall into that, that search uh, distance anyway. Horizontal. So let's make that about 0.15. These are change per meter. It's 0 0.05. Let's just go 0 0.2. Okay, so these two values here, height, toll, max, and height, toll, min. So these are very important. This is what essentially establishes our metric. We are looking for data where there is a minimum and a maximum height change within a given radius. So this allows us essentially to dial out noise. If you make it zero to point two, for instance, you can get noise in there in a way, and it it basically won't work. So we have to put something larger than zero, uh, or a larger enough minimum, so that we get enough of a height change so that we can actually tell there is something there. So I'm going to leave that on uh, point four. Uh, point two should be enough as well. So let's see what we do with that and the search radius. So basically. As it moves along, it's testing the data as it goes vertically within that search radius. Now, if that's too big, that can end up introducing uh, a little bit of, um, uh, should we say, misdirection, because essentially it's sampling too wider data looking down vertically. So I'm just going to downgrade that to about, say, do five, halve it. Search distance, so it's about four meters. Right, so the wall mode. So basically, we are looking for the top of something. Uh, in the future, there'll be other modes coming in here, but fundamentally, we want the top of this. Obviously, if you wanted the bottom of a wall, you would switch at the bottom. Um, this again, dealing with the smoothing of the heights. Um, this is just an overall DZ difference from the direction of travel before it goes into the routines above. So that needs to be at least as big. So I'll set that to 0.25. Uh, grid spacing again, so that's down, that's um, uh, harmonizing or normalizing the data. It's gone two mil. Um, the wall above below tolerance, so it, it, this allows a little bit of play. So once it knows roughly which direction the top of the or the bottom of the surface is going, it will do its best to follow it. But um, sometimes noise can make that a bit fuzzy. So this kind of just helps blur that kind of top or bottom line and give it a bit of play so it doesn't miss data that perhaps might be important. 
Otherwise, everything else we can leave as is and drop a seed on it. Let's go to the start of the data. It's about there. Click clear seed and then add so from there to there. All right, and then what we'll do is we'll just hit extract and see what happens. Excellent. So turn off the frustrums. Okay, so you can see that it stopped in the shadow caused by that uh, coach. Now, in theory, we could actually uh, perhaps adjust these settings so that it could reach across and um, carry on itself. I could uh, increase the number of redirects, uh, increase the redirect length so it looks further. Um, however, if you do that, it can sometimes basically make the make the, the routine um, less, more likely to fail. Basically, because we're basically loosening everything up. It's better, um, uh, in my experience anyway, to actually just say, "Well, okay, that's a gap. That's a decent gap. Uh, we'll just put a code in there. CB for crash barrier." Right click here and we will say commit and continue and then we will move it to the other side of the void. And you can see the uh, the line there that represents the top of the crash barrier. If I tick always visible, it'll be a bit easier to see. There you go. So that's the top of the crash barrier so far. And now I'm just going to jump over here, just move it so it's sitting on, sitting on top, and uh, rotate it slightly. Okay, so that should be good. And same as before, just going to take that and hit extract. Off it goes, and again, we've got to the same sort of thing as before. We've got a big shadow, so I'm just going to right click. Commit and continue. Right click, move to there. Zoom in on that. That's probably good enough to carry on. Extract. Okay, so here we've got to a bend in the data. Now again, we could perhaps get it to follow this. We could perhaps increase this horizontal search radius here, horizontal distance, to actually start um, looking a bit wider. But again, where you get crash barriers touching each other or getting close to each other, like they are there, it can hop across and you don't really want to do that. So I'm just going to carry on and commit and continue. And then I'm going to right click, move it. So there, right click, rotate, there. Okay, so now I've got the arrow, uh, the seed, sorry, pointing in the right direction. Let's just try another extraction. Okay, so you can see here that it's followed it quite well. When it got to the end, it stopped, and there was a hole, a void, and there's actually another crash barrier here that obviously you'd have to stop and do again yourself. All I need to do there is just commit that. There you go. So obviously now we need to just tidy that up in the modeler. But essentially just carry on adding seeds and extracting the data. That concludes the second video.